Hi, good evening. Thanks for tuning in with me for Living in Forgiveness. And you know, one of the things that I must say every week and tonight is no exception, I stand with Israel. And you know, one of the things that I want to just kind of veer off into tonight is sharing some things with you, obviously about forgiveness, but in the realm of not necessarily answering viewer questions, but in the sense of sharing with you how me, Julie Blair, arrived at this point. Some of you that I've had conversations with have asked, well, how did you, how did you get here? And it's sometimes in conversation or in your letters that you've said, I don't know where you came from, but here you are. So what's your background? How did you arrive at this message of forgiveness? And as I get into that, one of the things that I want to first, though, preface with this is that forgiveness is a choice and it is an act of obedience and a demonstration of love. And you see, I wouldn't be able to be here if it weren't for recognizing the importance of that. And so I'm no different than you in the sense that I had a choice. I had a choice of whether or not I wanted to be obedient. I had a choice as to whether or not I wanted all of what God has for me. But I didn't even know what that meant. And so throughout my life, it was much struggle. And maybe that's where you are at thinking, you know what? I want more of you, God. I'm waiting for you to show up. And I'm waiting, God, for you to just do big things in my life. And I'm waiting and I'm waiting. And God, where are you? Maybe that's where you're at today. But you know what? Here's the thing is that when you press in, you're going to get there. And I know that because I'm standing witness a testimony of what it means to never give up. You see, when I was five, I was adopted. Now, I had lived in a foster home for two years prior to that after my biological mom, who, who guest hosts with me, by the way. If you've seen her, she's wonderful. And so we were separated, and I was put in a foster home, and then I was adopted at age five. Now, there was one night where with my little Holly Hobby doll, I prayed that Jesus would be my escape. And I never really knew the impact, one, of how I even knew to pray that. Two, that I even knew who Jesus was because I didn't go to church up to that time. And three, the impact of what he did in answering me. In answering me. You see, a lot of people will say God answers prayers, but I think it's not necessarily even that. God answers the person who prays the prayer. And so God heard me speak all those years ago. You may have things in your life that you've asked God for that have not yet come to fruition, but you know what? When they do, when those things come to pass, when he answers you, my prayer for you is that you remember that you prayed those prayers and that he's always been listening to you. And so for me growing up was one of these things where there was a lot of physical abuse, a lot of physical abuse, and I ended up in a homeless shelter by my adoptive parents when I was 15. And so when you compound the physical abuse and all the emotional abuse, which maybe some of you have endured, it's, it's very devastating. And, you know, you may be right and justified in having unforgiveness in your heart because these people have done things to you, except here's the thing is that you're not. And you see, forgiveness is a process, and I didn't understand the process until I had to walk through it. And that's why this message is so near and dear to me, because I know the freedom that comes with it. I know the symptoms. And you know, there's 37 symptoms of unforgiveness, actually 38, because God just revealed to me another one. And the next symptom that he revealed to me is that there's, there's a decrease in faith when you live in unforgiveness. And so... Looking at that, I wouldn't be where I, was, where I am if it weren't for Jesus Christ. And that's the message. That is the whole foundation of this entire message is forgiveness through Christ and living in freedom. And so it wasn't for me in my life many broken relationships, many negative, nasty, horrible things but you see, I sat in church. I sat in the same church for 18 years. And sure, I could say that I, that I spent a year reading Genesis. 
Yay, praise God, right? That's wonderful. Except I didn't know how to apply God's word to my life. I didn't know how to live in victory. I didn't know how to overcome strongholds. I didn't know how to renew my mind. I didn't know that there was such a thing as peace. I didn't know how to get it. I did not know what I didn't know because what I didn't know was killing me. And I didn't know that what was killing me was keeping me further away from God, even though I could read his word every day. And this is where it wasn't until 2006 when, or 2005, August 17th of 2005, when my, my friend had been praying that I would receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of tongues. I had no idea what it was. I had no idea, no idea. And so I met him and his Bible teacher, and his Bible teacher asked me, are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? And I was always up for a good challenge. Sure, okay. And on that day, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of tongues, and my life changed. I never knew what tongues were. I, I had, didn't sit in a church where they, where they knew anything about that, and I had grown up Catholic to that point, so I, didn't, I knew even less than most, you may say. But you see, here's what happened, is from that day forward, my life changed. No longer was I in a waiting pool where, where my relationship was here to here to here to here, where this end is three feet and this end is five feet, and, and you, can, you know where you're at at all times in your relationship because it's the amount of wisdom that your little mind can handle. That's what I live like. And I didn't know anything to know what the difference would be. And so after that moment, my life changed. I was no longer in that waiting pool. I was like put in the ocean where it is so vast and it is so deep and the fullness of the Lord drew me near. I was drawn near through the power of his Holy Spirit in ways that I could never have described before. And you see, I could pull up all the scripture and, and go into Acts and I can go into Romans and I can go into Joel and I can bring in all these things, but I'm showing you this testimony because this is my testimony. And by the way, I didn't even know all this stuff was even in the Bible when it happened for me. So if you are in a position and you're saying, you know what, I want more of you, Lord, and you've been trapped in a, in a bondage in a religion or in a church building, but you're feeling like you're not growing, ask him what's keeping you. What is it that's blocking me? Do I have unforgiveness in my heart because that was, that was me? And here's the thing, was that I didn't know it, but in my mind, I thought that I forgave, except once I started praying in the Spirit more and more and more and more, and I was told if you want radical change in your life, you better expect to spend 40 or more hours a week with the Lord. Now, to be honest with you, I was going to cut into my hockey watching time. You know, I, I, like, I like hockey. I like the NHL. And, and I have to give that up. Are you for real? That, that was like, that was tough, especially when it was opening season and my team was doing awesome. And to have to get into that, I wasn't so certain. But here's the thing was that I heeded those instructions and I started praying and I started praying in the spirit and it was as though a movie in black and white started shifting to becoming more in color and God started showing up in more ways and in more ways and in more ways and revelation came which would make sense because Paul said that he had more revelation than anyone why because he prayed in tongues more than they did so then I started understanding the impact of God's word and so if you're struggling with not understanding God's word or you're struggling with something blocking you, my first two questions would be, have you dealt with your unforgiveness and where are you at with seeking him for all of what he has? You see, this isn't a doctrinal message. Let's, let's pin this doctrine against that doctrine. This is simply my testimony of how I got where I am and how I'm getting where I'm going. And you see, in the times that we're in, it's time for the body of Christ to step it up. It just is. It's time for each one of us individually to say, you know what? I want to live in forgiveness. I want to live in freedom. I want the fullness of the Lord. And for me, that's what started happening. The fullness of the Lord came upon me. You know, I moved to Dallas in 2006, less than a year later. I walked out. I, walked, I left a whole life behind. I owned a business there. I taught for a university in Denver. Lived in a high rise. I had a very nice worldly life even though I went to church every week. And I left it all to come to Dallas to start this ministry to help people live in freedom. 
But you see, you can't deliver people out of freedom if you're still trapped in bondage. And God has a message for you. And he has a ministry for you that every time you walk outside your door, you are in ministry. You don't have to be behind a camera, in front of a camera, whichever, in order to be of impact. And so if you're struggling with not getting all of what God has, why? How much time are you spending in prayer? Prayer will change your life because that is ability, your opportunity to be in relationship with him. You know, do you wake up to pray or do you pray when you wake up? And, and so as I started, as I knew that I came to Dallas to start a ministry, I didn't know what I was doing. I'll just be honest with you. I'd never done it before. When you set out to do something that you've de- never done before, there are things that come with it that you have to learn along the way. But you see, this is the goodness of God. And so I didn't even know all of these things, and I didn't even know the amount of unforgiveness that I had. I could pray in tongues all day long, but I didn't know what I didn't know, and what I didn't know was killing me. When I started understanding forgiveness, and when I was told in 2006, the end of 2006, Happy New Year's Eve, or Merry New Year's Eve, or whatever people say, that's when I learned the depths of unforgiveness. That's where I learned that it was like a, it's a heart disease that spreads like cancer. And that's when I started diving into God's word to be free in forgiveness. And so when people ask, where do you get this information from that you teach? You know what? It comes from the Lord God Almighty. The first hour of my day, I spent, I spent praying in the spirit. My lunch hour, I pray in the spirit. My hour before dinner, I pray in the spirit. And another hour. I'm up to four hours a day. And it's not to boast about, about me doing that. It is because I want you to recognize that you too can have that. You too can build a lifestyle of discipline in an area where you get all of Christ. If you want revelation from him, it will require you to do something to get it. God's word says, ask, seek, knock. God's word says, Ask and it shall be given unto you. If you are in me and I am you, whatever you ask, it shall be given. I think that's John 15, 5, 15, 7, one of the two. And so for me, I want to, hey, there's an opportunity that I can grow in Christ. Then I'm going to take that. And don't you want that? Don't you want more of him flowing through you? You see, the message of forgiveness is so powering because In it is a process. It is a process of us being reconciled to the Father. It is a purge process of of us removing that which is not of him to be replaced with him. So that way the more of him is in us, the more of him comes out of us, which means we can do more for his kingdom. And that is why this is so very important because unforgiveness impacts your health. It impacts your wealth. It impacts your marriage. It impacts your ability to get married. It impacts your ability to stay married. It impacts your ability to have children. So we can read in in Samuel and look at look at Hannah. When we then look at how it impacts us in our friendships, it impacts us when we look in our businesses, in ministry. Unforgiveness and forgiveness impact every single area of your life. If you want an increase in faith, if you want an increase in your finances, if you want an increase in revelation, wisdom, if you want an increase in your health and your wellness, if you want an increase in your relationship with Christ, it will do so. You'll get that through forgiveness. You want to be removed of guilt, shame, embarrassment, lies, deception, all gone through forgiveness. You want an increase in discernment, start forgiving. So when I really take a look at this, it is like, I'm like, I feel like, like I'm just a fiend for forgiveness because I know the impact that it had on my life. And I know the impact that it will have on yours when you say, today's the day, Lord, that I want to lose weight. I've said it before, forgiveness is the greatest weight loss and cheapest facelift because it is. I I lost weight. I lost so much weight when I started forgiving because I started seeing that what other people have done to me has nothing to do with how I respond. If I react, that's on me. If I respond by going to the Lord and saying, forgive them, Father, for they don't even know what they're doing, which most likely is true. But then I'm not bringing that upon me. And so for me, the message is one that God gave me. 
and God has a message for you, and the message for you today is so very clear. You are loved. There has never been a moment in your life when you have not been loved. There is an assignment for you. It doesn't matter if you're in a wheelchair. It doesn't matter if you don't have legs. It doesn't matter if you are a war veteran that, that is thinking that your life is over or your husband has cheated on you or your wife has cheated on you or you just don't know where you're at in your life. You've been divorced after 40 or 50 years. It does not matter. God is not finished with you. You are alive for a reason. For it says in Acts 17, 38 or 38, 17 that God chooses the time and place of where we shall live. So he has already set this for you. It's a matter of what are you going to do to get there. And for me, because I was so sick and tired of being sick and tired, I wanted, I wanted out. I wanted out of myself, really, to be honest with you. And when I made that choice, my life changed. And I started recognizing that through the message of forgiveness, there is freedom. Relationships are changed. Marriages are changed. Family is changed. And family has been, in my life, the thing that I have wanted the most, that so many people take for granted, and I see it day in and day out. And it really saddens me because people don't even know what they have. They don't even know what they have. And then it's gone, and I see it on Facebook. Oh, I lost so-and-so. And people are disappearing, dying, left and right, while we spend our time on social media, not even recognizing that the people before us are missing out on what we're doing. And so here I am in the midst of sharing this with you. So that way, this is like your rally call. This is a battle cry for you to say, you know what? God does have something for me. Yeah. I need not sit here and be a victim because you can be a victim or a victor, but not both at the same time. You can be pitiful or powerful, not both at the same time. You'll just be pathetic. And you see, that's where I didn't quite understand it. I sat in church. Church won't save you. Your government will not save you. Your neighbor will not save you. But you know what? Your Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ will. All you have to do is step it up and say, you know what? I confess with my mouth that he is who he says he is that, and confess my sins, Acts 3.19. Repent and seek forgiveness so that times of refreshing may come. And I didn't even know what it meant to be refreshed because it never had been. And so when I share this with you, it is because I know where I came from and I wouldn't be here if it weren't for the grace of God. And so you may be saying today, well, you know what? Um, well, God, I'm still waiting on God to do this. What are you doing in the meantime? Are you sitting there waiting on God to deliver a husband to you while you're doing all these other things with all the wrong people? Or are you preparing yourself to receive? You see, when we look at that so often, we put the blame and the responsibility on God to do things that his word already commands us to do. And that's how I live because I didn't understand one. I didn't understand relationship because it requires dealing with unforgiveness to get in relationship. But then I also didn't understand my responsibility or accountability in the relationship because I knew church. I knew how to sit and look pretty in, in church. Now, I'm not coming against church because church is a place of fellowship where we should be growing in Christ. So obviously, I'm not, it's needed. However, what are you using it for? What is your relationship with Christ like? What is the level of forgiveness that you have allowed to come into your life? And you may say, I don't have any unforgiveness before I can even get out my sentence. But you know what? Knowing that there's 37 symptoms, 38 symptoms of unforgiveness, there might be one that is a little hidden, narrow, little crack that has something not going your way in life. And I thought I didn't have forgiveness too. I'll just be honest with you. I did not believe that I had forgiveness because I said, oh, I forgave. But what's in the heart comes out the mouth. And God knows the motives. But not only this, James 1.8 tells us that the double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So look in the mirror. Look in the mirror and look at the fruit in your life. And look at all around and be honest. And then I would suggest getting in prayer and asking God, what is there, is there unforgiveness?